Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Here. So now, I think this was a couple of weeks ago, you posted a video, Jim, you know, where you asked the world, the gun world, mm -hmm. a question. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. And somebody yeah. tried to make a big deal out of it like I wasn't a fucking a patriot or something. Yeah. So so for anyone who doesn't know about this, I'm, I'll start it off. You can explain exactly where you, where you were going with it. From the way that I saw it, you were asked, you wanted to ask people. I remember you said in your video, think about this. I know everyone's going to get mad, but I want you guys to actually think about this and, and ask yourself the question. Are you ready for this much freedom? Um, and I think you were talking in terms of are, are, are we ready for folks out there to have access to, uh, you know, for example, when machine guns, you know, if they came off the NFA and all that, everyone could have access to machine guns. Are we really ready for that? Uh, am I wrong in my interpretation? No, that's exactly what I said. And if I could rephrase the question now, I probably would. I thought the way I qualified the question before I said it was enough to tell people. I mean, I've clearly said in that video that I would love to see the NFA go away. My point of view is, is it's just not going to happen in this day and time. You have too many people. It's a numbers game, you know, and, and what I was looking for in that post was just to kind of get a general consensus of what people actually thought was the right way to go about it. And we got a lot of interest. We got a lot of interesting comments in there that really made a lot of sense. in the fact that, you know, it, when you're looking at NFA stuff, you're looking at machine gun suppressors and short barreled rifles and shotguns. Mm -hmm. So with the with since the um, since the arm brace has come along, SBRs are almost a no brainer. It should be no problem at all to get that taken off the NFA. Sure, the in a, in the thing, it's pretty world. easy to convince somebody that a suppressor is nothing more than the muffler on your car. Absolutely, you know? I mean certain I mean, countries demand that. If, you know, I can honestly see that we could go and incrementally take those things back from the NFA. Right now, our society the way it is. If we tried to say get rid of the NFA, I think we would do more damage to ourselves than we would help ourselves because it's not going to happen for one thing. You're not going to convince the politicians sitting there right now to let people have machine guns. Anybody who doesn't believe that is not living in reality. You mm -hmm. know. So what mm -hmm. my thought is, is look at it in a more incrementally way to do it. You know, you, you, you get a lot of vibrato from people saying, I'll go to war with the government. Well, I spent some time at ben Bundy Ranch. Mm -hmm. That's something people might want to experience before they think they want to do it. There's a lot of romantic people out there that think, yeah, I'm going to die in a pile of brass. Um, and frankly, if that's all I got left, I'll say that too. Mm -hmm. But the reality is how many people would really do that? Yeah, I, I think I think that was part. I think that was part of what you were going for that check there. Um, I think it came across. I know even from from my point of view, it came across a little bit like, "Hey, are you ready for the terrorists to just be able to go out there and walk into a store and buy a machine gun and then go do whatever they want to do?" Well, you're going to get that. Yeah, you know, which that's yeah. going to happen. You know, bad guys don't care. But back, I mean, and my my um, my response to that whole thing is, do the bad guys really care about the laws? You know, no, it's like, we're, yeah, we're facing the bump stock ban right now. Um, and personally, I think that it's if it's not the end, I, it's def, it's not this. The bump stock ban is not the beginning of the end for sure. Right. But if it's not the end, it's very close to the end because of, of this thing. I don't think anyone really realize, realizes what's going on. So if we think that um, suppressors are going to come off the NFA, we're going to repeal the Hughes and all that kind of stuff, at the same time that you have a Republican in the White House, and they and between the Republicans and the NRA, they asked for a bump stock ban, and now we have that. And the Supreme Court, I think someone was just saying it here in the chat, Supreme Court's not even going to put a stay on that thing, right? That where the ATF can just make a ruling this thing that we've looked at several times before, we don't think it comes anywhere near to being a machine gun. Now it's officially a machine gun, and there's really not a lot we can do about that. Yeah, well, that's and that further settles my point about the fact that trying to get trying to get machine guns off the NFA right now is literally impossible because it just went in the opposite direction. And the only reason the bump stock exists is because of the ban on machine guns in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, why would it exist otherwise? You know, 
Yeah. So and uh, the, the whole finger thing. I mean, you know, anybody who knows how to really knows how to do bump stock, you know, and their belt loop, however you want to do it. Uh, yeah. What do you, what do you, before I get into it, before I start, because I could run up my mouth like Lola says, what do you think about this whole bump stock band thing? You know, it, it's a toy. It's stupid. Um, the media manipulated it to happen. You know, again, it, it's not going to change anything. It's just a, it's just a feel good measure to make people think that they're doing something and their life is something that's going to somehow be safer. What spurred this whole thing happened right here in my city at Mandalay Bay with that fucking wacko up there. Excuse me. With that mm -hmm. wacko up there running his. Um, that's fine. You, you labeled him completely, completely correctly. <laughs> that's one of those good uses of the word, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Hell yeah. Yeah. But anyhow, you know, I mean, this dude, you know, cuts loose with a bump stock on a gun. And frankly, he probably would have done a lot more damage had he just used controlled semi auto fire. Anybody who spent time on a range will know that. Yeah. Um, I mean, have we even confirmed that he used the bump stock? Was they that were on the guns. And there was, you know, you could hear what sounded like full auto fire in, in the videos and stuff. Um, I mean, there's so much controversy about that. We can't even get a straight answer out of our own sheriff about what happened there. And I certainly don't want to speculate on it because it probably goes far beyond my knowledge. I mean, people people say it could be a deep state thing. I don't know. And frankly, I don't want to know. All I know is it was fucking horrible. Mm -hmm. And it should not have happened. And whether the guy had a bump stock or not doesn't make any difference. Because like I said, if he was if he was actually a, a, a skilled shooter, there would have been a lot more dead bodies had he been shooting semi-auto with, you know, with a proper trigger press and, and sight alignment and sight picture. Mm -hmm. uh, the bump stock thing in that opinion is really irrelevant, but the general public doesn't know any different and they go, Oh my God, we need to get rid of that. That's horrible. Nobody should have that. That's the mentality we have in this country right now. And it's got, it didn't get that way overnight and it's not going to change overnight. It got that way incrementally since 1932, 34, whatever it was, I get, get lost on the date there. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that's been a long time, 80 some years and you're not going to turn that around overnight. So, yeah. And, and then, then go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm I'm listening to you. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to interrupt your conscious flow here. Well, I I just, you know, the and I don't want to I don't want to run on too long about this because it, it you know one particular person needed to make some t-shirt sales, so he decided to make a big deal out of it, and uh, when it really didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's all over with now, and we're done. Uh, but the in, uh, in terms of the bump stock. No, what you're talking about about the video. Okay, about the video. Okay, so yeah. you know, oh, um, I, I deflected there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought we were done with the bump stock because, uh, like I said, I personally don't have any use for them. I know they're a cool toy. I know a lot of people enjoy them. I'm sad to see that they got banned, but they got banned out of stupidity. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Let, so let's just compartmentalize everything here. I think in terms in terms of the bump stock, you know, what's really dangerous about it is. The fact that they can take something, make a lot of people don't realize this. When I posted about the bump stock today, someone said, well, why the hell are you worried about the bump stock? It's an accessory. That's not a gun. What does that have to do with the Second Amendment? Well, they practically made it a gun by doing this. Exactly. Exactly, Jim. That's the that's the point that I think people don't realize. The ATF turned that accessory. It's now classified as a machine gun. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what they're saying. Not only did they decide to classify it as a machine gun, they said, guess what? No one can own one of these. There's no license. You can't be a manufacturer. You can't have a letter from your sheriff. There's nothing that you can do. No one can have this anymore in America. That's a thing they haven't even done to the machine gun. Yep. Yeah, we still build them frequently. Yeah. Under very controlled um, situations, obviously. Yeah. You know? That's the scary thing about is about that that I think a lot of gun guys don't realize. You know, me personally, I get I get the I get where people are coming from from the bump stock who have ever used one. Uh, I've I've used it several times, really horrible at it, completely <laughs> goes against every other thing of shooting. Um I'm pretty sure I could shoot not, you know, obviously not as fast um as with that thing, but I could I could shoot pretty fast without it. And then, like you said, and even the ATF said, they know that people could simulate that using their finger, their, their, um, you know, belt loop and rubber bands, whatever. Right. Well, let, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And then I got a thing for you on that. Oh, go ahead. Hit me with it. Well, we have a, um, 
competition shooter that we uh, endorse here in town. His name's, believe it or not, John McLean. That's really his name. Okay. Uh, he's extremely fast. Um, he's, he's got an extremely fast trigger finger. And when we do triggers for his guns, we have to modify them because he's capable of pulling, pulling the trigger faster than the mechanism is capable of working. Hmm. You know, he can shoot, he can shoot a semi-auto gun faster than a machine gun runs. Mm -hmm. And well, we have to modify his trigger so he can do it because that's how fast his finger got. And that's just from pure practice. That's not a machine gun. That's just a standard semi-auto rifle, but mm -hmm. he has that kind of skill. So yeah. that kind of skill can be developed without any accessory tool, toy modification, whatever. Yeah. So, so how long, how long, and I know people are going to say, oh, that's ridiculous, but how long before they start making the steps in between um, that and you can't have any guns before they go, you know what, um, this particular person, we he shoots way too fast, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or you can't, yeah. uh, these triggers, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or these triggers, no good. You can't have those. Um, you know what? There's there's a whole bunch of people who can shoot too fast. Triggers can't, you know, triggers have to exist where you can only shoot this, you know, this much in this mm -hmm. given time, right? That they could keep taking that thing. If they could take an accessory and turn it into a machine gun, an accessory that they looked at before and said, this is not a machine gun. Mm -hmm. If they could do that, they can they can literally do that on anything. And all the politicians get to um, absolve themselves of anything because the ATF could just keep ruling. And right now we have the same ATF that Obama put into um, that, you know, uh, installed. Right. Well, actually, I think they have a different director now. They did. But is that recent? Uh, I believe so. Um, I don't you know, I don't I haven't stayed up on that that much, but I believe there some things have changed there because I've actually noticed a difference in how they do things. OK, uh, since Trump took over. It's kind of there's a difference here. I don't know if anybody else has noticed it. I'd be curious to see if anybody. Is that, wants a, is that a good a difference or a bad difference that you noticed? I've seen some good stuff from them. Um, I've seen some good thought were. Um, in our favor in a couple of things, a couple of different things. You know, we get these newsletters from different places where you read about this stuff. And a lot of people don't hear about these things because they're real minimal. Mm -hmm. But some of the stuff that I've seen come out of there is actually didn't seem too crazy, you know? Okay. Uh, I mean, I know that I've I mean, seen- Look at the, look mm -hmm. at the, um, look at the um, arm brace, for example. And the arm brace basically eliminated SBRs. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people still buy SBRs and they still go through the tax stamp and this and that. But the arm brace basically is an SBR. I'm sorry. Everybody knows it. Yeah. But you know? how long before they look at the arm brace and go, yeah, we're not we're going to disallow these? Well, that goes back to what you were saying before, because, you know, again, ATF in their wisdom has said, yeah, it's an arm brace. It's not a short barrel rifle. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into that. But again, just like with the bump stock, somebody could say, oh, well, those deadly arm braces, they're make, they're what makes the gun dangerous so we have to ban those by name or whatever i don't know however they ban an inanimate object you know um mm -hmm. it still comes down to the person holding the freaking thing you know? yeah but if and if they decide to do that now you're looking at a thing that once again no one can own you can't have it um i've no i've from what i've seen my own personal experience um you know, I've seen some kind of some weird things coming out from the atf you know for example walter that i think you've met before um, he's definitely uh, been there at the shop a couple of times on mm -hmm. SHOT Show, and we've done some shows. You know, they um, they came out and said something about the, he makes a 50 upper that goes on an AR-15 lower, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they came out and said, yeah, that upper has to be serialized. It's a bolt action, 50 cal mm -hmm. upper. And, you know, that's something that he's dealing with right now. I, before anyone starts asking, you well, know, that's kind of crazy because the lower is a serial numbered part. Yeah. So that is very crazy. You know, um, I'm going to have Walter is going to come on and talk to folks about that here soon before anyone starts asking us what's going on. And he, he they challenged that with the ATF. But, you know, there's a lot of weird things that I think that are going to start happening and that we're getting lined up for. And if they're allowed to do this thing, when everyone's saying, what are you guys getting all crazy about this bump stock thing? It's nothing. No one likes it. It's useless. Yeah. But no, I think that people just don't know the repercussions of things like that. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I think I think it's a very, very dangerous precedent. Um, none of our politicians have to go up there and make a bill. Vote for something, put it into law 
The president doesn't have to sign something after he said, oh, I wasn't going to do what whoever the president is. Right. Very, very dangerous thing. And people really need to think about that. And when you look at other countries, if you think that America can't be like other countries because we're America. Well, look at the states inside of America. I live in Florida and I never thought Florida was going to have gun control to the level that it has right now. Well, it, it's all changing with the with the you know the spread of socialism. I mean, when was the when was the in my life, particularly in my lifetime? I probably got a couple of decades on you, Hank. But uh, in my lifetime, the stuff I see pro politicians talking about today, thirty years ago, they would have been ran out of town if they talked about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the pendulum swinging, and right now it's swinging further to the left than I've ever seen it before. I mean, yeah. one of the things I like to I like to point out is that you know I was raised as a JFK Democrat, you know, John F. Kennedy, uh, he was everybody's hero in the early sixties. He was a good man. Yeah. He had some weird shit about him. He banged other women and had drug problems and stuff, but mm -hmm. I think half the men these days have that problem too. Mm -hmm. But the, the reality is that guy, John F. Kennedy, who was a Democrat, he's could not even fit in the Republican party today. No, you know, that's how far to the left, that our society has shifted that mm -hmm. a guy who was considered a blue dog Democrat. I mean, there's almost, I think probably the only blue dog Democrat left is probably Jim Webb. You know, I think he's one of the few Democrats left. He ran for president last time and he got like, no, they just totally ignored him because he was just not one of the guys they wanted. You know? Yeah. It's a very weird situation we have even weirder that um, there's a bunch of stuff that Obama couldn't get away with. Mm -hmm. Got Trump in there. Trump is doing stuff and no one's getting mad about it. You know, there's no one, the, the people, the folks out there are not getting mad. You know, um, I, I'm a, I'm an NRA guy, but I'm not very happy with the NRA. What people don't realize, most of the folks inside of the NRA are not mad about it. If Trump showed up in an NRA thing right now, they'd be cheering and, you know, just losing their minds, ripping their hair out about how awesome he is. Yet he is enacting gun control and weirdly able to get away with it. it. It makes me feel like these guys won't wake up and and um, and start doing something um, until they see someone there that they could fight. For some reason, they can't fight Trump. Yeah. Well, you know, as far as the gun thing, mm -hmm. I, I think it's we maybe want to look at changing the argument a little bit. Um. I mean, we've always based our arguments on we have the Second Amendment. It's our Second Amendment right. Well, nobody pays attention to the Constitution anymore. Mm -hmm. It's being subverted on a regular basis. It has been for years. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, it, it, you can get scholarly about it, start naming a bunch of stuff, but most people know what I'm talking about. You know, there, there's, you know, any you can name all kinds of things for probably just about every amendment in the Constitution. But let's look at it a little bit different. Let's look at something we call natural law. OK, now, when you think of the living beings. On the earth. Here, wherever. There's a food chain. There's animals that eat other animals. There's insects that eat other animals and eat other insects. There's animals that eat those insects. You know, it just kind of goes on a ladder. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be the top of the food chain because we have intelligence over all that. But. Mm -hmm. If you went one on one with a tiger, who's going to win? <laughs> the tiger every day if I'm not armed. <laughs> right. If, if I don't have know. my claws and my teeth, the tiger is going to win every day. <laughs> exactly. Even yeah. even with your claws and even with your fingernails and your teeth, you ain't a tiger. You ain't that strong. You ain't yeah. got those knives built into your hands. Right. You know? mm -hmm. um, now, being at the top of the food chain and having the intelligence to devise weaponry is why we're at the top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. Did we lose Jim? Uh oh, looks like he froze here. We may have to wait a little while for him to uh, come back on. If you guys are still out there, let me know. Let me know that you're out there. I think maybe we we lost Jim. It's either him or me. I'm not sure. It's you. You're frozen on here. Oh, okay. Oh, are you on my back? Am I you're back? Right. Okay. Yeah, Lola. If you're on the internet, get off the internet, please. I think Lola's. <laughs> you can't use the internet at the same time as me. <laughs> Shut everything down, woman. <laughs> we're, at, we're we're in a good flow right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Jim. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, you, yeah, well, I, you, I don't know where we got cut off, 
the point it's I was trying to make is mm -hmm. that, you know, there are, th there are a lot of animals that are below us on the food chain that could rip us apart one on one. But because we have the knowledge to create a spear or a club or a knife or a gun, we equalize that or become top of the food chain because of that. That's natural law. That's yeah. by natural demand. That's by natural design. Mm -hmm. So why the Second Amendment is just a reaffirmation of natural law. Right. So if it's a natural law for natural human beings, that's the argument, not the piece of paper that says you got to obey natural law. Natural law is what it really is. Mm -hmm. And natural yeah. law says we have weapons so we can defend ourselves from people that we can't. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, you can take that. I mean, you can take out the 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 wild animal and the human and say um, a 70 year old woman gets attacked by a 25 year old street thug. Mm -hmm. If she's got a gun, she has a chance. Everybody knows that. But that's natural law mm -hmm. because she can have that gun to protect herself from that guy who would normally rip her to pieces. You know, mm -hmm. now hopefully she's trained and skilled and makes it happen. But, you know, I here that's kind of extreme so people understand can really get what i'm trying to talk about here the constitution is practically dead with yeah. what our politicians have done to it these days yeah and it's so just a piece of paper if, if if um if if people don't recognize it you know if they don't respect it etc it's just a piece of paper right yeah yeah and we don't respect it anymore and in, in, in probably every amendment has been every amendment in the constitution has been violated in some way over the last several decades i don't know i'm not that constitutional scholarly all i know is there's a reason why we have weapons there's a reason why we learn how to make them yeah if you if you cannot um if you don't have anything you can't defend it's the best way that i could put it like in my own words so if you think that you're free, but you can't defend this freedom that you have, you don't have it. If you think that this car belongs to you or this house belongs to you or, you know, the money in your pockets is yours. But someone comes up to you and goes, what are you going to do for that for that money? And you, you're not you can't do anything. You don't have it. You might as well give it to them. Yep. You know, that's the thing. That's what we're losing. We're losing our teeth and our claws. And if you talk to a lot of these people, these very liberal leftist people out there, they're the kind of people that if you took a cat and you said, let's declaw this cat, let's take its fangs right. out. Yeah. Huh? They well, would they lose it. Right. Cat. Yep. Yeah. They would say you're cruel. You know, you're a horrible human being. You're doing this to this dog, this cat or whatever. And uh, I, I agree with that. But I don't want to be declawed. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Nobody does. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be defanged. <laughs> yep, is that? You know, I don't want to be fixed. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I think that that's what we're facing, and really and truly, we're yeah, we're we're really at that point where we have to realize we don't really have a Second Amendment because no one's respecting it. Republicans aren't respecting it. The president's not respecting it. I don't really think he's a Republican, to be honest with you. Um, obviously. They didn't support him and they don't support him. Go ahead. You froze up for a second. Man. Oh, yeah. OK, sorry about that. Um, I froze up again. OK, so I don't think the president is even really a Republican. You know, no, probably not. I mean, he's from New York. You know, yeah. I, you know, I like a lot of the stuff he's done. I voted for the dude. But I mean, look at the choice. You know, yeah, I, I voted, voted for him, too. I'll tell yeah. you, honestly, the last time I voted for a president that I actually wanted to win was 1992 in Ross Perot. No, you know, yeah. that was yeah. the last time I voted for a president that I really wanted. Yeah. Now I'll tell you, if Dan Crenshaw decides to run for president, I'll vote for that dude. And that's the guy I want to win. That dude is amazing. And I think he's probably I think he's probably the odds on favorite for 2024. I would okay. say I'll yeah. go out that right now. That dude is amazing. You know, the, the way he talks and the stuff he talks about and how he carries himself. Man, he's just yeah. amazing. Dan Crenshaw. OK, I have to make myself more. I've probably heard yeah, he, of him. He's a congressman. He was just electric congressman. He's a former Navy SEAL. And uh, yeah. uh, the, guy's, the guy's just amazing. He's not like he doesn't come off like a badass team guy, nothing like that. He's just a very, very intelligent, well-spoken man. Is that the gentleman that uh, lost his eye? Yeah, he wears an eye patch all the time. OK, right. OK, I agree with you. Good dude. From what I've seen, yep. you know, um, it's weird, man. It's weird. I feel like if if there's people out there that believe in the Second Amendment, we're going to have to start doing something to, you know, to defend that position, that there is such a thing as the Second Amendment. Right. 
or if you want to get everyone else involved because most people out there in the world i feel like are so comfortable and so safe um in their lives that they're not worried about it and the only time they're going to worry about it is when there's someone in the white house that they reasonably feel is going to do this thing to them i i voted for trump myself and i never ever voted for obama but i seriously believe that most of the people in america i'm not saying everyone so people don't get your feelings hurt but most of the people in america who are gun guys and say they believe in the second amendment and the constitution they're waiting until there's someone up there sitting in the white house that they could hate but for some reason they can't see what trump is doing to them yeah it's weird and, and i think that's a lot of the two-party system there People just mm -hmm. well, he's, he's a Republican, so he's got to be good. Well, the Republicans ain't our friend. They're not as bad as Democrats, but they've never really been our friends when it comes to guns. You know, no. politicians are just basically prostitutes for the most part. You know, they're they're just they're just trying to please as many people as they can and get what they can out of it. Yeah. Uh, and frankly, I think prostitution is probably a much better occupation. Yeah, I think I have more respect for the prostitutes. So, um, so, so just not to, not to try to like glance over this or whatever. So go back, just go back to the video for a second. I know you said it's like all done and everything, but I think you kind of alluded that it got out of hand and, and someone kind of took that out of hand. Um, I, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. I know I responded no, I to the it's over with. I don't because it's over with somebody, okay. somebody wanted to make a big deal out of it and they did and mm -hmm. they ended up leading it because it probably wasn't, it was pretty, it wasn't a really smart thing to do. Because people okay. knew what my meaning was there, mm -hmm. yeah, and there was probably a few people that didn't like it. And there may be a few people that that um, I think there's probably a few people that unfriended me. I don't care, but I got slammed with about fucking eighty million friends requests I'd never even seen before. I, I can't even answer them all. You know. So, and this is you're you're in the gun community. So obviously, this is gun community people. Um, look, I saw your post. I can't speak for other people. I saw your post, and I know other people reposted it. I reposted it. I responded to it. You know, you asked a question, you said to think about this, you know, I thought about it. I wrote down my response. I put it up there and I put and, and I reposted it. I think that part of it you wanted. Right. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you you you're Jim Fuller. So you didn't think you were going to put this up and like two people were going to look at it. No, I, I knew people would listen to it, you know, and, and it's like I had worked. I think I posted that at like six o'clock in the morning and I'd been working for four or five hours at that time. And I was just tired and I was thinking about stuff, you know, and uh you know, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that drives my thoughts behind this stuff, and I mentioned it earlier, is Bundy Ranch. You know, mm -hmm. I spent four or five days up at Bundy Ranch during that routine. And in my lifetime, that's, well, it's, I don't know of any other armed situation where citizens face the government like that in mm -hmm. any recent history. You know, and it taught me a lot being there. Um, there's a lot of people showed up there very well-meaning folks. Some people that probably, there was actually a couple of people that we ran out of there mm -hmm. uh, because they were scary. They were mm -hmm. freaky people that it's like, man, these people ain't right. We need to get them out of here. And for the record, those two people about two weeks after that shot two Metro cops in cold blood while they ate lunch. Wow. Yeah. So uh, those were the two people we picked out of there. So, when you get something like this happening and you got, you had militia groups coming from all over the country there. I mean, there was a group there, I think from, from Michigan, people came up from Arizona. There were people from Texas. Um, and this is what the second amendment's about. People could have came up there to defend this guy because the government was doing him wrong. Now I learned a lot from that time I spent up there and a lot of people may not, may not agree, but a lot of people weren't there. And they mm -hmm. didn't see what I saw. And a lot of people that were there, I've talked to them about this, and they had the same observations. And uh, one of them was during the majority of the time during the day, there's news cameras out there, and there's a lot of craziness going on. You see a lot of guys walking around with guns and kid on. Mm -hmm. On the situations where, in the few situations where it looked like it might get a little bit intense, those guys were gone. And if they were still there, the guns and the gear were gone too. Hmm. Now that sunk deep with me. Yeah, that's pretty much like a lot of people would like to see us get into a full scale civil war or whatever against each other. It's not really going to be a pretty thing. It's not going to be nice. It's not going to be romantic, right? I will tell you honestly, 
I prayed to God that I would never have to press the trigger on a federal law enforcement officer. And that's not because I love federal law enforcement officers. I don't want to go there. I don't want that in my world. Mm -hmm. And anybody that does is living in a fantasy land. Now, if it comes to it, down to it and we have to fight for our freedom, I'm an old man. What do I got to lose? I'm going to do it. I already did it at Bundy Ranch. I went up there prepared to do whatever I had to do. It cost me too. You know, so I don't want to. So anybody that wants to question my patriots and they have no idea what it cost me to go up there and do that thing, you know, and I'm not going to get into any more details about that. But mm -hmm. I just get really pissed off when people want to question my question, what I've done mm -hmm. stuff just because I dared to ask a simple question. Right. That I thought was relevant. And a mm -hmm. lot of people did too. So anyhow, I don't want to beat this to death anymore. Right. Right. No. OK. I, I mean, clear. I think. Yeah, here's what I think. I, I don't think you've show, ever shown me anything that makes me think that you're not a patriot, not a gun guy, and not someone who believes in the Second Amendment. And I don't like it when people try to say I'm not. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've got a track record that will prove way different. Yeah. Now, the flip side of it, without getting too deep into it before we move on from it, I think that because we're all very passionate people, you know, we all we, we all function off of passion, Jim. I mean, you do a lot of stuff that normal people out there forget about being your age and all that kind of stuff. They don't get into those things. Right. In order to do that, there has to be some kind of fire that burns inside of the person that makes them very passionate. I think you realize that. Right. Uh, I think I get where you're going. Yeah. So I'm just saying a lot of us are very passionate people and we say things sometimes that we don't necessarily mean or other people listening to us react to those things in not necessarily the ways we wanted everyone to react when if it was just us talking to each other it might get fiery but you know the one of the things about being a man is when a man is talking to a man and things get fiery it doesn't mean it's time to fight you know it's just time for you to stand up for what you believe in you might be saying it very passionately that guy might be saying it very passionately but it doesn't always lead to okay now we're going to kick each other's asses now, see, I came from that generation, and I've been in a lot of fights. I've lost a lot, and I've won a lot. Um, I don't walk away from them, but that's just my upbringing, and that's yeah. my generation. Um, but I don't look for them either. Mm -hmm. You know, that's age. Yeah. Age yeah. teaches you that. Yeah. And, and listen, I think at the end of the day, we're all pretty much on the same page. We, we're, we're seeing something slip away. It's weird for me, Jim, because you – you know, um, you, you remember a time when you could go and easily uh, get a machine gun and, and, and get lots of different guns that, that are very difficult, expensive or impossible um, to do today and that the rest of us can't enjoy. I kind of came into this, I don't know, um, maybe like six, seven years ago. And um, and there's a lot of cool things out there. And I, and I see the things that I can't do anymore. But I see the writing on the wall, like you said earlier. There's something different happening that kind of never happened before. And all these politicians are getting together and they're figuring out ways to do this. There's there's none of no one on the Supreme Court is worried about what's happening. There's no Republican out there worried about what's happening. They've all sat they all sat down somewhere and decided that they're going to make this happen. And the only boogeyman that we could look at is Trump and the NRA and the ATF. But so far as I know, the ATF works for all those people. Uh, you know, they don't they don't work for the NRA, but, you know, they work for the politicians. They work for the president. Right. Well, that, that's a very good op uh, That's a very good observation. And basically what it is, is just dividing people into groups again. You know, I mean, you're a black guy. I'm a white guy, but we're both gun owners. So we belong to that group. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they find some way to group you into something that they can hate you for. You know, they can't hate you because you're black, but they can hate you because you like guns. Mm -hmm. you know? But they can hate me because I'm white because it's cool. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs>